talking about blessed assurance. Just use one and two. And said assurance, Jesus is man. Oh, what a fourth years of glory divine. Here a salvation, marches of God. Born of his spirit. indeed we want to thank you again for this blessed day bringing us together again to come and learn from your word Lord we want to pray and lift everything we're coming to do here today take control of this gathering let your name be glorified and Father God open our eyes to the truth because the Bible says only the truth will set us free. I pray, Father God, that none of us will be sin, but only you, God. Take control. We lift everything to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good evening again. Um, as we... Last week, we said we were talking about salvation, and we have some printouts we're going to watch through and we're going to read. You can. Mm. So last week we we said we're talking about salvation today. What is salvation? 
We want to know what is salvation. This is a big word. A lot of people will say, oh, salvation, salvation. What do we think is salvation? Why do we say why do we talk in the church today we're hearing those English words, salvation? What really salvation mean to us? What do we understand about salvation? Can we please? What is salvation? At times we'll see uh, salvation, I mean, salvation, this, but what really salvation mean? Huh? Being saved. Huh? A ticket to heaven. Wow. Uh-huh. Assurance of eternal life. That is good. Yes. All the definitions given here are true and really perfect. Being saved, a ticket to heaven, assurance to make it to heaven. Yes. If we continue going down, some people will say, okay, deliverance from God's punishment. A lot of people will say, oh, yes, God, uh, that is about, save means deliverance or any other thing else. But let somebody read for us from Hebrew. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Yeah, we'll give them the mic. Who is reading? Hebrews 9, 27. Hebrews 9, 27. Everyone must die once. And after that, the judgment of God. So you may want to say, oh yes, I believe that I'm going to die. And God's judgment is coming. But I've not been doing bad. So there's no need for me to worry about that. So there's no need for me to worry about that. But you know, it is certain that no, we are just on earth here. We are like a pilgrim. We are marching on. We are moving to another place where we're going to stay forever. But how are you going to spend eternity with God? It's very much important. You may want to say, yes, I'm a clean man. I'm a perfect man. But definitely, Romans 3, 23 tells us that there's nobody perfect. Can we read that one? Romans 3, 23. Romans 3, 23. It really tells us that, hey, let's read it and see. So, you can never, nobody is perfect. Everyone has seen and come short of the glory of God. So if everyone has seen, they say everyone, all, in other version, they say all have seen. That not even half, but all have seen. So there's no perfect man. No perfect man. So if there's no perfect man, that means we need salvation. All have seen. And fall short 
of God's glory. That means salvation is needed. Salvation is needed. That, the, that is from the Bible, the scripture. That means salvation is needed. If you have sinned, and God cannot compromise with sin. God don't compromise with sin. Sin is sin. So if all have sinned, you cannot even say, oh, my own sin is lighter, or this, that. No, every sin is a sin. All have sinned. So, but now if we need salvation, if salvation is needed, then how do we get salvation? How do we get salvation? Huh? Asking for forgiveness. Okay. Asking for forgiveness. She said, we can get salvation by asking for forgiveness. Yes? Any other? How do we get salvation? How do we get salvation? Second John chapter 1. Second John chapter 1, 19, I mean 9 to 10. Second John? Second John? Yes. Okay. Okay. Second John. Second John chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. He said, anyone who does not stay with the teachings of Christ but goes beyond it does not have God. Whoever does not stay with the teachings has both, whoever stay with the teaching has both God and the Father. We can only get salvation by accepting Jesus Christ. And not only Jesus Christ, we accept also the teachings of Jesus Christ. That is John chapter 2, 2 John chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, tells us that we got to accept Jesus and the teachings of Jesus Christ. Only that teachings we accept it, not only to listen to it, and forget about it, but you accept Jesus and the teachings of Jesus. So that definitely means that is one of the way, the road for us to gain salvation. By accepting Jesus. It is not about good works. It is not about how much I am nice in the, I'm nice to people or this, that. It is not about it. It is about accepting Jesus. It is about accepting Jesus and his teachings. Can anybody, can we digress into that a little bit? How do we accept Jesus or his teachings? How do we accept Jesus and his teachings? Yeah. So anything that you believe is real, you can accept. Anything so, you believe that is real, you can accept. So she said, you can accept Jesus because you believe in it. Any other? How do we, we say, we say definitely by accepting Jesus, 
How do we get salvation? By accepting Jesus and his teaching. So how do we, he said, definitely is by believing anything. Okay. <laughs> Any? Yes? Many of us grew up um, believing that we were saved by grace. Mm -hmm. But there's another little phrase on the end of that. It's by grace through faith. Through faith in Jesus. And therefore, we got to put our faith in Christ. How do we accept Jesus? By trusting, putting our faith in Christ Jesus. So, grace is good, we are, we, are, we are saved by grace, but through faith in Christ Jesus. But yet, that faith, if we want to accept Jesus, we got to put our faith in Christ Jesus. And what, is going to, what are we going to do to grow that faith in Christ Jesus is when we have a time like this to come around and read the word of God. So he said, accepting Christ and accepting his teachings, and we can only get the teachings of Christ through the Bible. There's no other way. When we practice this, we accept the teachings of Christ. There are people down there who don't know Christ, and we practice it. Our life will be the Bible to those who cannot read or who have not read the Bible yet. When they see us behaving, the way we behave, they are definitely going to accept Christ. So, by we accepting Christ, we put our faith in Christ. And how do we accept his word? By reading, getting time to read his word. So when we read this word, accept it, we we'll practice it. We'll not only be readers or hearers of the word, but we will be doers. We do what God wants us to see, uh, what God wants us to do. And at the end of the day, our life will be an example in our society. The way we behave, the way we talk to people. The way we be At times, you will see others are very, very much arrogant, but you come and see, you come, you talk to people politely. And people will start to say, come on, what a nice guy is this? What a nice guy is this? Oh, I admire this guy, the way you handled that situation. It was so powerful. And people start drawing closer to you. People start coming closer to you. And that is how you take, you use your life to evangelize to people. So we accept Christ and we accept his teachings. There are so many things about the teachings of God. Like when he said, when somebody hits you this way, you give him another side of it. For some people, I will not do that. But when you, somebody, how polite you are, how gentle you are, oh my God. You've already evangelized to him. So, it is necessary that we accept it. Look at what Acts chapter 4, verse 17 says. It says, salvation is found in no one else. No one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved except Jesus Christ. So if we want salvation, salvation definitely, people will see you the way you behave and they know that you are saved. You will see the way people behave and know that this particular person is saved. Not just by, not just by coming to church, but you can see somebody by the way he behaves. You see Christ in that person. You will definitely see Christ in that person. So salvation, we can only accept Christ. Faith in Christ is necessary. It's really necessary. So let's see again what it says. Whoever acknowledged Jesus, this is Jesus himself talking. Jesus himself talking. It is not from any other person. It's Matthew chapter 10 verse 32. Can somebody read that for us? Matthew 10 32. Matthew 10, 32. 
Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. This is Jesus himself. Not even Paul, not Peter, not Luke talking, but this is from Christ himself. Can we read it, please? You acknowledge Christ publicly. They are sad in people, honestly speaking. Anyone that is saved can never deny Christ in his side. Even when you go outside, people will see Christ in you. That is what he's saying. That means if you go outside and you deny me, I will deny you tomorrow to my Father in heaven. But if you accept me, acknowledge me, if you acknowledge Christ in the public and everywhere you go, in your environment, in your church, in your school, in your society, when you acknowledge me, say, I will acknowledge you tomorrow in heaven. So salvation is built on Christ. Acknowledging Christ. Behaving like Christ. Doing things like Christ. And we can only accept his teachings, know how Christ responds to things by when we get time to read the word of God. That is why it is very important for Christians to read Bible. Get your Bible studies time. Get your time for your devotion. Get time to read the word of God so that you can able to know and know the behavior of Jesus. You can never learn about Christ anywhere. Get time to read about the Bible and see how Christ was responding to issues. Can you imagine somebody beating you and saying all kinds of things about you? Say, God, forgive them, Lord, for they do not know what they are doing. You know, people were mocking at him, provoking him, saying all kinds of things, but yet he would not respond neg negatively. He was a polite guy. Very, very much polite. So, we've seen that, that we need to acknowledge Christ wherever we are. Wherever we are. This is really difficult because at times, when we move outside, we go into certain places, there are certain things that definitely we are faced with. We really like, we say, okay, I'll pull Christ now. Let me, lay, let me see. Uh, uh, we'll talk about Christ later, but I'm going to respond to this thing but negatively. And a lot of people are doing it. But salvation is in Christ Jesus. And people need to see, you need to acknowledge Christ wherever you go. And the third thing, about salvation, we need to repent. Repent it. We're turning away. Repentance, definitely. It doesn't mean like when I go this way and I turn half this way. No. If I'm coming this way, it's 90 degree. I turn around 90 degree. Like if I'm coming this way, I need to turn around and come right back from where I was because you got to turn around. Forget about everything you have been doing. That is not pleasing God. That is repentance. So you turn around. Mark chapter 1 verse 15, he says, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. That is the, the gospel is the news. It's the good news about Jesus Christ. Believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that is one thing that is very, very much paramount. To believe in the gospel. When you accept Jesus, you accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. You accept it. Then, salvation is yours. And we talk about Acts chapter 13. It said, therefore, repent and return so that your sins may be wiped away in order that the time of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Man, there are so many things we do on earth. We're worried over so many things. There are so many things that is challenging us because our faith and our trust is not in Christ. But when you forget about everything and focus on Christ, there are things that are worrying others. He can't worry you anymore. You just look at things and know that Christ is in control. 
So he said, turn around so that you can get the refreshing. Refreshing may come from the presence of God. When you always trust God and repent and turn away as somebody that is saved, you always have joy in your heart. The peace of God is all. Even when people are worried over things, the peace of God comes closely. You always, oh, why are you always happy? That is the joy of God. We see some Christians always smiling. Things don't worry them. And you want to know, what is really bringing this joy in your life? That's the peace of God. So salvation is not just about going to heaven, but you even have the calmness, the refreshment, the peace of God on earth here with you. So it is very, very much important. We need to practice it. And let's turn away. And what it says here, the fourth thing that is really, really important, we really need to know is baptism. Baptism. The salvation. What are the things we get from baptism? Mark chapter 16, verse 16, it says, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. So if you want to be saved, if you want to be saved, or you want to gain salvation, you definitely need to be baptized. That is definitely it. He said, but whosoever does not believe will be condemned. And what are the things? The following thing happened during baptism. One, in baptism, we we'll receive forgiveness. That when you want to say, when you do all those things and you repent and you baptize, salvation in Christ, it takes care of, salvation in Christ takes care of even your old sin, everything you have done before. And people will say, ah, do you think God will forgive your old sin? Yes. When you are saved, God will forgive it. So, when you are baptized, it definitely means you come in accepting Jesus Christ and it accepts forgiveness. And the next thing, and that the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, you receive the Holy Spirit. You receive forgiveness and you receive the Holy Spirit. And what is the Holy Spirit? That is the Spirit of God, the gentle Spirit that always keeps reminding you, even when you want to go astray. There are some people find joy in doing evil. They're continuously doing evil. They don't even have regret of it. But when you are baptized and God has forgiven you and God has, you have received the Holy Spirit of God, it always keeps telling you, this what you are doing is not good. Stop it. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. It reminds you. It teaches you the word of God. We'll talk about that later, about the Holy Spirit of God. But that is very, very much important. We need to know that. And the other thing he talks about, he talking about when you are baptized in Galatians 3, 26, when we're baptized, we put on Christ. That, that mansion will go, boom. We're pulling all the old garments and we're taking up Christ in us. That you no longer live, but Christ lives in you. Christ lives in you. So we got to know that. When we're baptized, we put on Christ. When we're baptized, we are saved. You're no longer the same person anymore. So you need your faith in Christ. Know that Christ has done a lot of work in you. A lot of work may be done in you. So definitely you can only, that change, is start, that change will start coming. It will not come automatically when you are baptized. But how do we see those? It's only when we get time to read the word of God. We study the word of God and we ask God to transform us. He can definitely do it. These are not things that will come automatically, the changes we've all seen in this place. The politeness, the gentleness in us. It only comes when we accept the teachings of Christ. And how can we accept that teachings of Christ? It's by reading the word of God. Get time for devotion. We read the word of God. 
read things, articles about Christ. And we come together in a fellowship like this. We learn together. And the fifth thing about salvation, we got to endure. Because there are a lot of things that we definitely want to come and spark up for you to go back to your old ways. When you definitely have said, oh, I am definitely for Christ now. Maybe your own brother would definitely come and try to say things against you. Your families may come and they want to say things against you just for you to, to take up your old tricks again. But you need to endure those provokings, provocations. You need to endure. People will try to betray you a lot. They'll try to say all kinds of things against you. But you're going to endure, or else you will miss your salvation. And nobody wants, at least when you walk in this world, you want to get a good pay. You want to get a good salary. And I believe salvation is a good reward for all of us. Any question, any contribution on that? Any contribution? Yeah? Yeah? It seems like when we talk about this baptism, yeah. we in the Methodist Church are doing it wrong in that we are baptizing babies. They, the parents, of course, have to commit to raising the child in, in letting the child learn about God. But this seems like this should be a more adult kind of... Oh, yeah. Um, well, yeah, we, the Methodists, we believe in infant baptism. But that is why we have, we have people responsible that will come definitely and... They'll come before you and take an oath there. They have a responsibility to bring up that children into the church, into the God-fearing way. And even the church also will take an oath on that. But not only that, there is another system where we call the confirmation. That child is going to be big enough to be responsible indeed to know that, yes, I can now do this on my own. Like in Africa, what would, I have some we have some people that will even come from England, they will come just for confirmation. Big, big one, they will come during Easter's and every other day, we have confirmation class with them. Because they were baptized at the time they were small, in fact, but after they've grown up and they can able to make decisions for themselves, then they will come for confirmation. So that one, the responsibility, your own responsibility as parent or anybody that is a God parent is for you to bring up the child the God-fearing way. Make sure that you read the Bible to him or her and bring her to church. Like I used to talk to, I used to admire the young lady over there, I baptized the, 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 Every Sunday she is coming and I hope and I pray that that will continue. So, it is not, it is not, it is nothing bad about it. But we that are taking an oath in the presence of God have a responsibility. And that is a responsibility we should not forget. Any question? Mm -hmm. But it still seems like we should, as adults, be rebaptized. Oh. <laughs> you do baptism. That is why we, the Methodist Church, in fact, you don't even, if you are baptized in any other church, you come to the Methodist Church, we don't even talk about rebaptizing you. No. It is not in the Methodist Church. When you, there are some people in the Catholic Church, if you are not baptized in the Catholic Church, you cannot even take a communion in the Catholic Church. So, in the Methodist Church, when you are baptized outside and you come, we know that you've accepted Jesus Christ. We will not come and rebaptize you. We do have a reaffirmation of our baptism. That is it. Every now and then. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've seen that. Yes. So that's accepting our baptism as an adult, right? 
<laughs> Any question? Yeah? Don't we hear it every once in a while, maybe when we baptize a baby, I don't know, uh, where it says, remember your baptism and be thankful? We, that's in our liturgy somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, I got a question. Yeah. It's kind of a can of worms, but what provision is there in all of this talk about salvation for the people who lived and died before the time of Christ. Because salvation is mentioned in the Old Testament in the Psalms. Mm -hmm. um, Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. So who, who was providing salvation to those who lived and died before Christ? So that's a good question. It's a good theological question. Do we? Can anyone answer that question for us? <laughs> Who was providing salvation? Eh? You want to answer, sir? Let me hear. Mm -hmm, sir? I'm trying to come up with an answer, and the closest thing I can come up to is God was, was their pathway to salvation. God was the pathway to salvation. He said God was the pathway to salvation. And, and he kept giving them chances, and they kept blowing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's I think this is, you know what, you know what, um, because of time, this question next week, we will deal with it first. This is a very big question. Who we are providing salvation for those who died before Christ's coming? I think this is a big question. I really, if we, it's a really big theological question. Let's go and do research. I like that. So next week, this is a this is one of, we're dealing with this one, but we're talking about we're dealing about the lordship of Christ next week. The lordship of Christ. The lordship. If Christ is our Lord, that means the same salvation. We're talking about the salvation. If we're talking about the salvation, the lordship of Christ, it deals with this particular topic. So I want us to deal with that next week, Wednesday. The Lordship of Christ then will handle this one. Who was providing salvation for those who died before Christ? Yes, sir. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are all human beings living on earth God's children? If all human beings are all human beings on earth considered to be God's children. That's are all human beings live by who? Are all human beings on earth considered by God to be his children? Or, or are God's you asking? I'm asking, I'm not telling. They are created by, everyone is created by God. But one of the things, one of the things that God has always given us is everyone is a free moral agent. God, don't force you. It allows you, that is why he gives you the wisdom and the spirit of God exists in you. Some people think, uh, seem, some people decide to go the negative way. And some people decide to know that I have a maker and I'm going to close to my maker. But every human being was created by God. And some people don't even want to know. They just believe that they, they just evolve and come back. They don't even believe in God. But everyone on earth was created by God. Everyone is created by God. Yes, sir? 
So if they are not believing in Christ, then they would not be saved. Oh, definitely. Based on the scripture, if anyone don't believe in Christ, he's not saved. So that is why we should make it as a concern for us. We have relatives. We have, we, my mom was a Muslim. My mother was a Muslim. And even when I became a pastor, my mom used to come to my house and in her own room, whenever she visits us, she comes in her own room and she will start praying the Muslim way. So like I was going down on my knees praying for her. And God touched her and she became a Christian before he died. She died. And I know she accepted Jesus Christ. But that one is definite. According to the scripture that I have learned and I believe, I trust, I have studied, if you don't know Christ, only salvation comes from Christ, only Christ. So that is why if we want, if we want to our people of meet tomorrow again with another person you love so much, it's better you introduce Christ to him. It is our responsibility. That is why Christ came. He died for everyone. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten, that whosoever, even if he's a criminal, as long as he believes in Christ, he is saved. John 3, 16. So, you believe in Christ. Can you, remi- can you imagine the, the thief on the cross? The other one was mocking Jesus. And they said, if you are Christ, come down and save yourself. And the other one said, hey, we are suffering for punishment or for crime we have committed. But this man has committed no crime. They are just suffering him. And Jesus looked at the one, the, the thief on the cross. Just because he believes in Christ, that Christ did not commit anything. He said, you will be with me in paradise. He got his salvation right on the cross. At the very end. So it doesn't matter whatever crime you might have been committed before. But reach that person with Christ. We have a big responsibility as a Christian. And I want to talk to you. Every soul you bring to Christ, you're making a headway to heaven. It is only in America here because everything is comfortable. You understand? We have food enough. We have food abundant. But in Africa, we even use food because there are people don't even have, they don't even know, they don't even have food to eat. So at times, for you that God is blessing, you can use food to bring people to God. Oh. As time goes on, I was trying to show you some pictures in university campuses. There are some people, there are some guys on campuses that they, they've been on campuses. They don't even, they struggle to get their education. They don't have quality food. So like our campus ministries, the campus ministry we used to run, the Methodist campus ministry, the Every Nation campus ministry, will reach out to them with food, clothing, with cloth. And this, uh, um, we use uh, 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 um, Bathing soap, laundering soap, and everything else is difficult for people to get back in home, back in Africa. But we use the thing as means of getting them and bringing them to Christ. So that is why it is really difficult here because of the laws in America. It's too much. You cannot, you can't use all those things to talk to because everything is in abundance for people. But whatever means, whatever means you have. To reach out to people, to make them know Christ, you are helping that person to make it, to gain his salvation. It's a reward to you. It's a really reward to you. So, if God, if Jesus is your Lord, and you really like, you're talking about what is Lord, your master, you obey your master, then I think leading others to salvation will be very much important to you. Because that is why he left his throne and he came and died. So if Jesus is your Lord, 
salvation, leading people to salvation, will be very much important to you. And we'll learn about that next week, the Lordship about Christ. Any question? We're learning about that. When we go, let's write that thing down. Why? Or oh, those who died before Christ, how do they gain their salvation? That is one. Let's make a research on that. And then we come, we'll deal about that. And then we'll talk about the Lordship of Christ. Then we'll pray. Any question, any contribution? Are we okay today? Any comment about the teachings today? Any comment? Do we learn anything today? About salvation? Yes, sir? <laughs> yes, ma'am? When I was little, um, and I would hear Reverend Kleckner talking about um, coming to God, if you come to God, you're coming through Christ. In my mind, I thought that meant, or could mean, that if you come to believe in God and accept God, you are coming through Jesus Christ. But then you, you would have to be conscious of Christ and Christ's uh, sacrifice of his life and his suffering in order to come to God. You couldn't come to God just automatically through Jesus Christ without realizing who he was. Does that make any sense? You say it again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I don't know any other way to say it. Okay. I, I, I just always took it to mean that you are automatically coming through Christ. If there's no other way to get to God and you come to accept God, you're, you're coming to him through Christ. No, there's no other way to get onto God. That is why Jesus is saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That the way to get onto God is through Jesus Christ. In our first teaching about the church, we talk about the letter, the Jacob's letter. And in John chapter 1, verse 51, Jesus said, he said, I am the letter that you get onto Christ. You saw the angel descending and ascending, and God was talking to Jacob. We, talk, we spoke about that. We said, Jesus is the letter. So the only way, there is no truth, there is no truth about it. That is why we used to get, in Africa, our Muslim friends, we told them, hey, we, there's no need. They do a lot of sacrifice. There's no need to do a sacrifice anymore. The sacrifice God, uh, Christ has done for us is sufficient. There's nothing perfect that you can offer again to God as a sacrifice that is more powerful than Christ. That is why when you read the entire book of Hebrews, Hebrews tell you about the superiority of Christ. That Christ is superior than even every other prophet that has existed before him. He is more superior. So the perfect sacrifice was what Christ has done for us. So there's no way you can get unto Christ and to God except through Christ. Yes, sir. So I think we uh, many times um, understand or believe that Christians and Jews have the same God, Christ. believe in the same God, are, are Jewish people without salvation if they don't accept Christ? as the Savior? 
if Jewish, if even you are a Jewish, that is why when you go up to this present moment, people are praying for the Jewish that don't know Christ. If you are a Jew and you, if you are a Jew and you don't accept Christ, you can't make it to heaven. Christ is the only way, based on this scripture, is the only way that you can gain your salvation from. No other thing else. So if you're a Jew and you don't know Christ, a lot of Jews are turning today to Christ. A lot. Some were difficult, but it is a gift from God that will just preach. When you go through this world, you start reading this world. A lot of Jewish are turning today to Christ, to Christianity. It's not based on their own doing. It's based on the kind of prayer people are praying for them. Prayer is so much effective when you pray in Christ for people to accept Christ. There are a lot of people who just, that that's just their work. Because they have saved, they want others to save also. So they don't joke about that. They keep praying for the unsaved people. And the only way you can save is through Christ Jesus. So, if you are here and your child is in another way and he don't know Christ, it's your responsibility to start praying for him. Until the day he will know Christ, then you will be happy. But if somebody don't know Christ, there's no way he can gain salvation. No way. Salvation is not for him. You can't buy salvation with your money. Only Christ. Huh? I tend to have a metaphorical uh, that I guess I want to start. Don't we believe in the Trinity? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? Yes. Yeah, that's one person. So, so in a sense, as what Mary Jane was saying, mm. if you accept God, mm -hmm. you accept Jesus, you also accept the that's Holy the Spirit. That's the same person. Christ is... That's a deep theology, you understand? Uh, pardon? That is a deep theology we are talking about. Man. He said, the word said in John chapter 1, verse 1, he said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. And he became flesh and dwell among us. You understand? When we say he left his throne and came down. Okay. To that, 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 again, that's what I'm saying. It's just too literal for me. I don't know where heaven is. I have a personal belief mm -hmm. that heaven is right here. So it's not the words we use. It's not what we say to people, whether we witness so much as the way we act. That's our life. And if we use God as the creation, the creator, uh, we used to have in, in our church when I was growing up, the thing where the light is up there said, God is love. God is love, yeah. And, and I think Jesus is a representation of that love. And love is not just for me. It's for me and others. And that's where I see that I'm a, I want to say I'm a practicing Christian, but I'm not always happy. I'm not always uh, joyful. Uh, when, have to be living. Go ahead. When you talk about the Trinity, first of all, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, it, they are all, they are one person, and nobody is lesser or nobody is lesser than the other. Okay. They're all equal in one body, you understand? And when you talk about Christ, you're talking about God. And you're talking about God is love. You get it from the scripture where Jesus said, I am God is love. I am love, you yeah. understand? Yeah. Christ is love, and love is very important for each and every that was why when there's a theology that is so deep that there's no way there's that is why the Muslims is very difficult for them to even 
to even say, but you cannot, you cannot, you cannot argue God, you understand. Or you cannot say God is not powerful to do that. God can do anything he wants to do and nobody question his integrity. I don't dispute that. But I, I, I guess as I say, I just have a little more uh, universal perhaps I should now, say. Now, what is happening on the Lordship of Christ, I believe this, most of this doubt you guys are facing on the Lordship of Christ when we come, maybe we can able to answer some of these questions. And when we answer some of these questions, and if there's any other doubt, then we can talk about it again. But, um, so, mm -hmm. No. You are accepting, yeah, when you accept it. When I was teaching here, I talked about the Holy Spirit just now. I told you about the things, the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, it's very minor. When you get in the baptism, you receive the Holy Spirit. You put on Christ. And you are saved. You know, these three things go together. There's no way you can accept Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God don't dwell in you. That is lie. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you decide to accept his teachings, you read, you get in devotion, going down on your knees and praying. The Spirit of God straight out. The day you accept Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God comes inside, dwell in you. And when the Spirit of God dwells in you, it tells you exactly when you are going wrong, it tells you that you are going wrong. And therefore, you can only grow in the things of God when you make the Bible your companion by studying the Word of God. And as you study the Word of God, you start growing in your Christianity. We have five minutes more for time. Next week, we're talking about the Lordship of Christ. And let's go and do a research on those two things we're talking about. About how God, those who died before the New Testament or the coming of Christ, how do they get saved? Then, we're coming about the Lordship. Is Christ your Lord? If Christ is your Lord, what are the commitments we need to do? And we'll learn a lot about that next week. But let's come so that we can able to know. That. that is why we have this kind of thing coming up. It will challenge us. And we learn a lot. All of us are learning. And it will reach a point in time I just want to be relaxing. Then I will see some. Maybe Mike will just get up and say, this is what the Bible says concerning this. You know, we all learn. Then I will sit down and I say, oh, yes, this is happening. I believe we will arrive at that point. But these are really good questions we need to know. If everyone, God's children, that's a big question. Is everyone the children of God? We need to know all those things. And know God's own point. And is God, God is not that kind of dictator because, like, I like this, the same system of, like what God is doing, God is, a, God is a democrat, like I can say. He don't force anybody to do things. But you got to realize that God has done something for you. And you appreciate it and say, yes, I'm going to be closer to him. So in America, you guys are so democratic that in Africa, for me, I don't even go to church and leave my children. If you don't come to church, you'll never, you'll not eat at home. But in America, <laughs> The children have the right. You have the right to feed your children. So even if they don't come to church, you don't force them. But in Africa, it's not like that. We force them to come to church. But it's, it's another thing we'll talk about next week. Let's just bring up prayer requests, please. Let's pray quick. I just want us to pray for Stacy.
She lost her dad. Let's remember her in our, pray, in our prayer as we pray today. And let's continue to pray for the church. That God will bring people more. And let's pray that God will open our understanding more. As we're dealing with topics like this. Next week we're dealing about the Lordship of Christ. What does that mean? What is the salvation of those in the Old Testament that died before Christ came? What is the salvation of them? Let's think about those things. Let's remember those things. God, open our mind. Lord, we want to thank you this evening. We thank you for this great gathering here. Lord, we pray that you continue to impact this church. Open our brains that we will learn more about you. And that that will be our heart desire, that people want desire to know you more. And because when we know you, our salvation is sure. And help us to able to impact others to come to know you more. Lord, wipe out every doubt, spirit of God. Walk in our hearts. Every doubt, everything that is doubtful, open our mind, open our heart to know more about you so that doubts will remove in our minds about you. Take control of. We commit every church member in your care, those who are sick. Father God, we pray for your healing. Those who are going through difficulties, we pray that, Father God, you are the problem-solving God. Solve their problem. Father, we want to commit our church members that are traveling. Father God, they've gone on trips. Father God, we pray that you protect them and bring them back safely. We thank you, Lord. We commit our lives into your care. As we go, Father, we are not departing from your presence. But we pray, Father God, that your presence will go with us. And that your peace that passeth him and understanding will be with us till we meet again in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace in Jesus' name.